Moscow, Russian, Moskva TR. Moskva, IPA, MSKVA listen is the capital and most populous city of Russia, with 13.2 million residents within the city limits and 17 million within the urban area. Moscow is one of Russia's federal cities. Moscow is a major political, economic, cultural, and scientific center of Russia and Eastern Europe, as well as the largest city both by population and by area entirely on the European continent. By broader definitions Moscow is among the world's largest cities, being the 14th largest metro area, the 18th largest agglomeration, the 14th largest urban area, and the 11th largest by population within city limits worldwide. According to Forbes 2013, Moscow has been ranked as the ninth most expensive city in the world by Mercer and has one of the world's largest urban economies, being ranked as an alpha global city according to the Globalization and World Cities Research Network, and is also one of the fastest growing tourist destinations in the world according to the MasterCard Global Destination Cities Index. Moscow is the northernmost and coldest megacity and metropolis on Earth. It is home to the Ostankino Tower, the tallest free-standing structure in Europe, the Federation Tower, the second tallest skyscraper in Europe, and the Moscow International Business Center. By its territorial expansion on July 1, 2012 southwest into the Moscow Oblast, the area of the capital more than doubled, going from 1,091 to 2,511 square kilometers 421 to 970 square miles, resulting in Moscow becoming the largest city on the European continent by area. It also gained an additional population of 233,000 people. Moscow is situated on the Moskva River in the central federal district of European Russia, making it Europe's most populated inland city. The city is well known for its architecture, particularly its historic buildings such as St. Basil's Cathedral with its colorful architectural style. With over 40% of its territory covered by greenery, it is one of the greenest capitals and major cities in Europe and the world, having the largest forest in an urban area within its borders—more than any other major city—even before its expansion in 2012. The city has served as the capital of a progression of states, from the medieval Grand Duchy of Moscow and the subsequent serdom of Russia to the Russian Empire to the Soviet Union and the contemporary Russian Federation. Moscow is the seat of power of the government of Russia, being the site of the Moscow Kremlin, a medieval city fortress that is today the residence for work of the President of Russia. The Moscow Kremlin and Red Square are also one of several World Heritage Sites in the city. Both chambers of the Russian parliament the State Duma and the Federation Council also sit in the city. Moscow is considered the center of Russian culture, having served as the home of Russian artists, scientists and sports figures and because of the presence of museums, academic and political institutions and theaters. The city is served by a transit network, which includes four international airports, nine railway terminals, numerous trams, a monorail system, and one of the deepest underground rapid transit systems in the world, the Moscow Metro, the fourth largest in the world and largest outside Asia in terms of passenger numbers, and the busiest in Europe. It is recognized as one of the city's landmarks due to the rich architecture of its 200 stations. Moscow has acquired a number of epithets, most referring to its size and preeminent status within the nation, the Third Rome, Tredich Rim the Whitestone One, Belakemina the First Throne, Pervoprestolna the Forty Soroks, Sorikroka, Sorik, meaning both, forty, a great many, and a district or parish, in Old Russian. Moscow is also one of the twelve hero cities. The demonym for a Moscow resident is, Moskvik, Moskvich for male or, Moskvika. Moskvichka for female, rendered in English as Muscovite. Topic <inaudible> etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> the name of the city is thought to be derived from the name of the Moskva River. Finno-Ugric Maria and Maroma people, who were among the tribes which originally inhabited the area, called the river Mustajoki. It has been suggested that the name of the city derives from this term. However, there have been proposed several theories of the origin of the name of the river. The most linguistically well-grounded and widely accepted is from the Proto-Balto-Slavic root asterisk muz, muzg from the Proto-Indo-European asterisk meu, wet, so the name Moskva might signify a river at a wetland or a marsh. Its cognates include Russian, muzga muzga, pool, puddle, Lithuanian, mazgati and Latvian, mozgat, to wash. Sanskrit, majati, to drown, Latin, mergo, 
to dip, immerse. There exist as well similar place names in Poland like Mozgawa. The original Old Russian form of the name is reconstructed as asterisk Moski, asterisk Moski, hence it was one of a few Slavic U stem nouns. As with other nouns of that declension, it had been undergoing a morphological transformation at the early stage of the development of the language. As a result, the first written mentions in the 12th century were Moskov, Moskvi, accusative case, Moskvi, Moskvi, locative case, Moskvi, e, Moskvi, Moskve, Moskve, genitive case. From the latter forms came the modern Russian name Moskva, Moskva, which is a result of morphological generalization with the numerous Slavic stem nouns. However, the form Moscovy has left some traces in many other languages, such as English, Moscow, German, Moscow, French, Moscow, Georgian, Moscovy Latvian, Maskova, Ottoman Turkish, Moskov, Tatar, Emesok Maska, Kazakh, Emskiu Maskiu, Chuvash, Muscov Muscov, etc. In a similar manner the Latin name Muscovia has been formed, later it became a colloquial name for Russia used in Western Europe in the 16th-17th centuries. From it as well came English Muscovy and Muscovite. Various other theories of Celtic, Iranian, Caucasian origins, having little or no scientific ground, are now largely rejected by contemporary linguists. History Prehistory The oldest evidence of humans on the territory of Moscow dates from the Neolithic Shukinskaya site on the Moscow River. Within the modern bounds of the city other late evidence was discovered the burial ground of the Fatyanovskaya culture, the site of the Iron Age settlement of the Dyakovo culture, on the territory of the Kremlin, Sparrow Hills, Seton River and Kuntsevsky Forest Park, etc. In the 9th century, the Oka River was part of the Volga trade route, and the upper Volga watershed became an area of contact between the indigenous finno ugric such as the Maria and the expanding Volga Bulgars particularly the second son of Khan Kubrit who expanded the borders of the old Great Bulgaria, Scandinavian Varangians, and Slavic peoples. The earliest East Slavic tribes recorded as having expanded to the upper Volga in the 9th to 10th centuries are the Vyatichi and Krivichi. The Moskva River was incorporated as part of Kievan Rus into the Suzdal in the 11th century. By AD 1100, a minor settlement had appeared on the mouth of the Neglanaya River. Topic: <laughs> Early History 1147 to 1283. The first known reference to Moscow dates from 1147 as a meeting place of Yuri Dolgoruki and Sviatoslav Olgovich. At the time it was a minor town on the western border of Vladimir Suzdal Principality. In 1156, Kanjaz Yuri Dolgoruki fortified the town with a timber fence and a moat. In the course of the Mongol invasion of Rus, the Mongols under Batu Khan burned the city to the ground and killed its inhabitants. The timber fort na Moskve, on the Moscow River was inherited by Daniel, the youngest son of Alexander Nevsky, in the 1260s, at the time considered the least valuable of his father's possessions. Daniel was still a child at the time, and the big fort was governed by Tian's deputies, appointed by Daniel's paternal uncle, Yaroslav of Tver. Daniel came of age in the 1270s and became involved in the power struggles of the principality with lasting success, siding with his brother Dmitri in his bid for the rule of Novgorod. From 1283 he acted as the ruler of an independent principality alongside Dmitri, who became Grand Duke of Vladimir. Daniel has been credited with founding the first Moscow monasteries, dedicated to the Lord's Epiphany and to Saint Daniel. <laughs> Grand Duchy 1283-1547 Daniel I ruled Moscow as Grand Duke until 1303 and established it as a prosperous city that would eclipse its parent principality of Vladimir by the 1320s. On the right bank of the Moskva River, at a distance of 5 miles kilometers from the Kremlin, not later than in 1282, Daniel founded the first monastery with the wooden church of St. Daniel Stylite. Now it is the Danilov Monastery. Daniel died in 1303, at the age of 42. Before his death he became a monk and, according to his will, was buried in the cemetery of the St. Daniel Monastery. Moscow was stable and prosperous for many years and attracted a large number of refugees from across Russia. 
The Rurikids maintained large landholdings by practicing primogeniture, whereby all land was passed to the eldest sons, rather than dividing it up among all sons. By 1304, Yuri of Moscow contested with Mikhail of Tver for the throne of the Principality of Vladimir. Ivan I eventually defeated Tver to become the sole collector of taxes for the Mongol rulers, making Moscow the capital of Vladimir Suzdal. By paying high tribute, Ivan won an important concession from the Khan. While Khan of the Golden Horde initially attempted to limit Moscow's influence, when the growth of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania began to threaten all of Russia, the Khan strengthened Moscow to counterbalance Lithuania, allowing it to become one of the most powerful cities in Russia. In 1380, Prince Dmitry Donskoy of Moscow led a united Russian army to an important victory over the Mongols in the Battle of Kulikovo. Afterwards, Moscow took the leading role in liberating Russia from Mongol domination. In 1480, Ivan III had finally broken the Russians free from Tatar control, and Moscow became the capital of an empire that would eventually encompass all of Russia and Siberia, and parts of many other lands. In 1462 Ivan III, 1440–1505 became Grand Prince of Moscow then part of the medieval Muscovy state. He began fighting the Tatars, enlarged the territory of Muscovy, and enriched his capital city. By 1500 it had a population of 100,000 and was one of the largest cities in the world. He conquered the far larger Principality of Novgorod to the north, which had been allied to the hostile Lithuanians. Thus he enlarged the territory sevenfold, from 430,000 to 2,800,000 square kilometers 170,000 to 1,080,000 square miles. He took control of the ancient Novgorod Chronicle and made it a propaganda vehicle for his regime. The original Moscow Kremlin was built during the 14th century. It was reconstructed by Ivan, who in the 1480s invited architects from Renaissance Italy, such as Petrus Antonius Solarius, who designed the new Kremlin wall and its towers, and Marco Ruffo who designed the new palace for the prince. The Kremlin walls as they now appear are those designed by Solarius, completed in 1495. The Kremlin's Great Bell Tower was built in 1505–08 and augmented to its present height in 1600. A trading settlement, or Passad, grew up to the east of the Kremlin, in the area known as Zaradai. In the time of Ivan III, the Red Square, originally named the Hollow Field Polo Pole appeared. In 1508–1516, the Italian architect Alavas Friazin arranged for the construction of a moat in front of the eastern wall, which would connect the Moskva and Neglanaya and be filled in with water from Neglanaya. This moat, known as the Alavazov moat and having a length of 541 meters (1775 feet), width of 36 meters (118 feet), and a depth of 9.5 to 13 meters (31 to 43 feet), was lined with limestone and, in 1533, fenced on both sides with low, 4 meter thick (13 foot) cogged brick walls. Topic: <laughs> Serdum (1547 to 1721). In the 16th and 17th centuries, the three circular defences were built, Kitai Gorod, Kataj Gorod the White City Belij Gorod and the Earthen City Zemlinojgorod. However, in 1547, two fires destroyed much of the town, and in 1571 the Crimean Tatars captured Moscow, burning everything except the Kremlin. The annals record that only 30,000 of 200,000 inhabitants survived. The Crimean Tatars attacked again in 1591, but this time were held back by new defense walls, built between 1584 and 1591 by a craftsman named Fyodor Khan. In 1592, an outer earth rampart with 50 towers was erected around the city, including an area on the right bank of the Moscow River. As an outermost line of defense, a chain of strongly fortified monasteries was established beyond the ramparts to the south and east, principally the Novodovichy Convent and Donskoy, Danilov, Simonov, Novospassky, and Andronikov monasteries, most of which now house museums. From its ramparts, the city became poetically known as Bielokamenea, the White Walled. The limits of the city, as marked by the ramparts built in 1592, are now marked by the Garden Ring. Three square gates existed on the eastern side of the Kremlin Wall, which in the 17th century, were known as, Konstantino Eleninsky, Spassky, Nikolsky owing their names to the icons of Constantine and Helen, the Saviour and Saint Nicholas that hung over them. 
The last two were directly opposite the Red Square, while the Constantino Elenensky Gate was located behind St. Basil's Cathedral. The Russian famine of 1601 03 killed perhaps 100,000 in Moscow. From 1610 through 1612, troops of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth occupied Moscow, as its ruler Sigismund III tried to take the Russian throne. In 1612, the people of Nizhny Novgorod and other Russian cities conducted by Prince Dmitry Pozarsky and Kuzma Minin rose against the Polish occupants, besieged the Kremlin, and expelled them. In 1613, the Zemsky Sobor elected Michael Romanov Tsar, establishing the Romanov dynasty. The 17th century was rich in popular risings, such as the liberation of Moscow from the Polish-Lithuanian invaders 1612, the Salt Riot 1648, the Copper Riot 1662, and the Moscow Uprising of 1682. During the first half of the 17th century, the population of Moscow doubled from roughly 100,000 to 200,000. It expanded beyond its ramparts in the later 17th century. By 1682, there were 692 households established north of the ramparts, by Ukrainians and Belarusians abducted from their hometowns in the course of Russo-Polish War 1654 These new outskirts of the city came to be known as the Mashanskaya Sloboda, after Ruthenian Meshchane town people". The term Meshchane acquired pejorative connotations in 18th century Russia and today means petty bourgeois or narrow-minded Philistine. The entire city of the late 17th century, including the Slobodas that grew up outside the city ramparts, are contained within what is today Moscow's central administrative okrug. Numerous disasters befell the city. The plague epidemics ravaged Moscow in 1570–1571, 1592 and 1654–1656. The plague killed upwards of 80% of the people in 1654–55. Fires burned out much of the wooden city in 1626 and 1648. In 1712 Peter the Great moved his government to the newly built St. Petersburg on the Baltic coast. Moscow ceased to be Russia's capital, except for a brief period from 1728 to 1732 under the influence of the Supreme Privy Council. Empire 1721 to 1917 After losing the status as capital of the empire the population of Moscow at first decreased from 200,000 in the 17th century to 130,000 in 1750 but after 1750 the population grew more than tenfold over the remaining duration of the Russian empire reaching 1.8 million by 1915 by 1700, the building of cobbled roads had begun. In November 1730, the permanent street light was introduced, and by 1867 many streets had a gaslight. In 1883, near the Prekostinsky gates, arc lamps were installed. In 1741 Moscow was surrounded by a barricade 25 miles 40 kilometers long, the kamer kolyski barrier, with 16 gates at which customs tolls were collected. Its line is traced today by a number of streets called Val ramparts. Between 1781 and 1804 the Mytoshinsky water pipe the first in Russia was built. In 1813, following the destruction of much of the city during French occupation, a commission for the construction of the city of Moscow was established. It launched a great program of rebuilding, including a partial replanning of the city center. Among many buildings constructed or reconstructed at this time were the Grand Kremlin Palace and the Kremlin Armory, the Moscow University, the Moscow Manege Writing School, and the Bolshoi Theater. In 1903 the Moskvaretskaya water supply was completed. In the early 19th century, the arch of Konstantino Elenensky Gate was paved with bricks, but the Spassky Gate was the main front gate of the Kremlin and used for royal entrances. From this gate, wooden and following the 17th century improvements, stone bridges stretched across the moat. Books were sold on this bridge and stone platforms were built nearby for guns. Raskets. The Tsar Cannon was located on the platform of the Lobnoy Mesto. The road connecting Moscow with St. Petersburg, now the M10 highway, was completed in 1746, its Moscow end following the old Tver Road, which had existed since the 16th century. It became known as Peterborskoy Shoss after it was paved in the 1780s. 
Petrovsky Palace was built in 1776–1780 by Matvey Kazakov as a railway station specifically reserved for royal journeys from St. Petersburg to Moscow, while coaches for lesser classes arrived and departed from Seksvyatskoy station. When Napoleon invaded Russia in 1812, the Moscovites were evacuated. It is suspected that the Moscow fire was principally the effect of Russian sabotage. Napoleon's Grande Armée was forced to retreat and was nearly annihilated by the devastating Russian winter and sporadic attacks by Russian military forces. As many as 400,000 of Napoleon's soldiers died during this time. Moscow State University was established in 1755. Its main building was reconstructed after the 1812 fire by Domenico Gilliardi. The Moskovskaya Vedomosti newspaper appeared from 1756, originally in weekly intervals, and from 1859 as a daily newspaper. The Arbat Street had been in existence since at least the 15th century, but it was developed into a prestigious area during the 18th century. It was destroyed in the fire of 1812 and was rebuilt completely in the early 19th century. In the 1830s, General Alexander Bashilov planned the first regular grid of city streets north from Petrovsky Palace. Kodinka Field south of the highway was used for military training. Smolensky Rail Station forerunner of present-day Belorusky Rail Terminal was inaugurated in 1870. Sokolniki Park, in the 18th century the home of the Tsar's Falconers well outside Moscow, became contiguous with the expanding city in the later 19th century and was developed into a public municipal park in 1878. The suburban Savyalovsky Rail Terminal was built in 1902. In January 1905, the institution of the city governor, or mayor, was officially introduced in Moscow, and Alexander Adrianov became Moscow's first official mayor. When Catherine II came to power in 1762, the city's filth and smell of sewage was depicted by observers as a symptom of disorderly lifestyles of lower class Russians recently arrived from the farms. Elites called for improving sanitation, which became part of Catherine's plans for increasing control over social life. National political and military successes from 1812 through 1855 calmed the critics and validated efforts to produce a more enlightened and stable society. There was less talk about the smell and the poor conditions of public health. However, in the wake of Russia's failures in the Crimean War in 1855-56, confidence in the ability of the state to maintain order in the slums eroded, and demands for improved public health put filth back on the agenda. Topic: <inaudible> Soviet Era 1917 to 1991. Following the success of the Russian Revolution of 1917, Vladimir Lenin, fearing possible foreign invasion, moved the capital from St. Petersburg back to Moscow on March 5, 1918. The Kremlin once again became the seat of power and the political center of the new state. With the change in values imposed by communist ideology, the tradition of preservation of cultural heritage was broken. Independent preservation societies, even those that defended only secular landmarks such as Moscow-based OIRU were disbanded by the end of the 1920s. A new anti-religious campaign, launched in 1929, coincided with collectivization of peasants. Destruction of churches in the cities peaked around 1932. In 1937 several letters were written to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union to rename Moscow to Stalindar or Stalinodar, one from an elderly pensioner whose dream was to live in Stalinodar, and had selected the name to represent the gift dar of the genius of Stalin. Stalin rejected this suggestion, and after it was suggested again to him by Nikolai Yezihov, he was outraged, saying, What do I need this for? This was following Stalin banning the renaming of places in his name in 1936. During the Great Patriotic War, the Soviet State Committee of Defense and the General Staff of the Red Army were located in Moscow. In 1941, 16 divisions of the National Volunteers, more than 160,000 people, 25 battalions, 18,000 people, and four engineering regiments were formed among the Muscovites. In November 1941 German Army Group Center was stopped at the outskirts of the city and then driven off in the course of the Battle of Moscow. Many factories were evacuated, together with much of the government, and from October 20 the city was declared to be in a state of siege. 
Its remaining inhabitants built and manned anti-tank defenses, while the city was bombarded from the air. On May 1, 1944 a medal, "...for the defense of Moscow," and in 1947 another medal, "...in memory of the 800th anniversary of Moscow," were instituted. Both German and Soviet casualties during the Battle of Moscow have been a subject of debate, as various sources provide somewhat different estimates. Total casualties between September 30, 1941, and January 7, 1942, are estimated to be between 248,000 and 400,000 for the Wehrmacht and between 650,000 and 1,280,000 for the Red Army. During the post war years, there was a serious housing crisis, solved by the invention of high rise apartments. There are over 11,000 of these standardized and prefabricated apartment blocks, housing the majority of Moscow's population, making it by far the city with the most high-rise buildings. Apartments were built and partly furnished in the factory before being raised and stacked into tall columns. The popular Soviet-era comic film Irony of Fate parodies this construction method. The city of Zelenograd was built in 1958 at 37 kilometers 23 miles from the city center to the northwest, along the Leningradskoy Shoss, and incorporated as one of Moscow's administrative okrugs. Moscow State University moved to its campus on Sparrow Hills in 1953. In 1959 Nikita Khrushchev launched his anti-religious campaign. By 1964 over 10,000 churches out of 20,000 were shut down mostly in rural areas and many were demolished. Of 58 monasteries and convents operating in 1959, only 16 remained by 1964. Of Moscow's 50 churches operating in 1959, 30 were closed and 6 demolished. On May 8, 1965 due to the actual 20th anniversary of the victory in World War II Moscow was awarded a title of the Hero City. In 1980 it hosted the Summer Olympic Games. The MKAD Ring Road was opened in 1961. It had four lanes running 109 kilometers 68 miles along the city borders. The MKAD marked the administrative boundaries of the city of Moscow until the 1980s, when outlying suburbs beyond the Ring Road began to be incorporated. In 1980, it hosted the Summer Olympic Games, which were boycotted by the United States and several other Western countries due to the Soviet Union's involvement in Afghanistan in late 1979. In 1991 Moscow was the scene of a coup attempt by conservative communists opposed to the liberal reforms of Mikhail Gorbachev. Topic. Recent history 1991 -present. When the USSR was dissolved in the same year, Moscow remained the capital of the Russian SFSR on December 25, 1991 the Russian SFSR was renamed the Russian Federation. Since then, a market economy has emerged in Moscow, producing an explosion of Western-style retailing, services, architecture, and lifestyles. The city has continued to grow during the 1990s to 2000s, its population rising from below 9 to above 10 million. Mason and Nigmatulina argue that Soviet-era urban growth controls before 1991 produced controlled and sustainable metropolitan development, typified by the Greenbelt built in 1935. Since then, however, there has been a dramatic growth of low-density suburban sprawl, created by a heavy demand for single-family dwellings as opposed to crowded apartments. In 1995-1997 the MKAD Ring Road was widened from the initial four to ten lanes. In December 2002 Boulevard Dmitriya Donskogo became the first Moscow metro station that opened beyond the limits of MKAD. The Third Ring Road, intermediate between the early 19th century Garden Ring and the Soviet-era Outer Ring Road, was completed in 2004. The Greenbelt is becoming more and more fragmented, and satellite cities are appearing at the fringe. Summer dachas are being converted into year-round residences, and with the proliferation of automobiles there is heavy traffic congestion. Multiple old churches and other examples of architectural heritage that had been demolished during the Stalin era have been restored, such as Cathedral of Christ the Savior. In 2010's Moscow's administration has launched some long-duration projects like the Moha Ulitsa in English, My Street Urban Redevelopment Program or the Residency Renovation 1. Topic. Geography Topic. Location 
Moscow is situated on the banks of the Moskva River, which flows for just over 500 kilometers (311 miles) through the East European Plain in central Russia. 49 bridges span the river and its canals within the city's limits. The elevation of Moscow at the All Russia Exhibition Center (VVC), where the leading Moscow weather station is situated, is 156 meters (512 feet). Teplistanskaya Highland is the city's highest point at 255 meters (837 feet). The width of Moscow city, not limiting MKAD, from west to east is 39.7 kilometers (24.7 miles), and the length from north to south is 51.8 kilometers (32.2 miles). Topic: Time. Moscow serves as the reference point for the time zone used in most of European Russia, Belarus and the Republic of Crimea. The areas operate in what is referred to in international standards as Moscow Standard Time MSK, MSOC which is three hours ahead of UTC, or UTC plus three. Daylight saving time is no longer observed. According to the geographical longitude the average solar noon in Moscow occurs at 12.30. Climate Moscow has a humid continental climate, Köppen climate classification Dfb with long, cold although average by Russian standards winters usually lasting from mid-November through the end of March, and warm summers. Weather can fluctuate widely with temperatures ranging from minus 25 degrees Celsius minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit in the city and minus 30 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit in suburbs to above 5 degrees Celsius 41 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, and from 10 to 35 degrees Celsius 50 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. Typical high temperatures in the warm months of June, July, and August are around a comfortable 20 to 26 degrees Celsius 68 to 70 79 degrees Fahrenheit, but during heat waves which can occur between May and September, daytime high temperatures often exceed 30 degrees Celsius 86 degrees Fahrenheit, sometimes for a week or two at a time. In the winter, average temperatures normally drop to approximately minus 10 degrees Celsius 14 degrees Fahrenheit, though almost every winter there are periods of warmth with day temperatures rising above 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and periods of cooling with night temperatures falling below minus 30 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. These periods usually last about a week or two. The highest temperature ever recorded was 38.2 degrees Celsius (100.8 degrees Fahrenheit) at the VVC weather station and 39.0 degrees Celsius (102.2 degrees Fahrenheit) in the center of Moscow and Domodedovo Airport on July 29, 2010, during the unusual 2010 Northern Hemisphere summer heat waves. Record high temperatures were recorded for January, March, April, May, July, August, November and December in 2007 to 2014. The average July temperature from 1981 to 2010 is 19.2 degrees Celsius, 66.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The lowest ever recorded temperature was -42.1 degrees Celsius, -43.8 degrees Fahrenheit in January 1940. Snow, which is present for about five months a year, often begins to fall mid-October, while snow cover lies in November and melts in the beginning of April. On average Moscow has 1,731 hours of sunshine per year, varying from a low of 8% in December to 52% from May to August. Between 2004 and 2010, the average was between 1800 and 2000 hours with a tendency to more sunshine in summer months, up to a record 411 hours in July 2014, 79% of possible sunshine. December 2017 was the darkest month in Moscow since records began, with only 6 minutes of sunlight. Temperatures in the center of Moscow are often significantly higher than in the outskirts and nearby suburbs, especially in winter. For example, if the average February temperature in the northeast of Moscow is minus 6.7 degrees Celsius (19.9 degrees Fahrenheit), in the suburbs it is about minus 9 degrees Celsius (16 degrees Fahrenheit). The temperature difference between the center of Moscow and nearby areas of Moscow Oblast can sometimes be more than 10 degrees Celsius (18 degrees Fahrenheit) on frosty winter nights. Topic: Climate changes. 
Below is the 1961–1990 normals table. The annual temperature rose from 5.0 degrees Celsius .0 degrees Fahrenheit to 5.8 degrees Celsius .4 degrees Fahrenheit in the new 1981–2010 normals. In 2015, the average annual temperature reached a record high of 7.5 degrees Celsius .5 degrees Fahrenheit. Recent changes in Moscow's regional climate, since it is in the mid-latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere, are often cited by climate change activists as evidence of global warming, though by definition, regional climate change is regional, not global. During the summer, extreme heat is often observed in the city 2001, 2002, 2003, 2010, 2011. With a southern part of central Russia, after recent years of hot summer seasons, the climate of the city gets DFA trends. Winter also became significantly milder, for example, the average January temperature in the early 1900s was minus 12.0 degrees Celsius 10.4 degrees Fahrenheit, while now it is about minus 7.0 degrees Celsius 19.4 degrees Fahrenheit. At the end of January to February it is often colder, with frosts reaching minus 30.0 degrees Celsius minus 22.0 degrees Fahrenheit a few nights per year 2006, 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2013. The last decade was the warmest in the history of meteorological observations of Moscow. Temperature changes in the city are depicted in the table below. Topic. Demographics Topic. Population According to the results of the 2010 census, the population of Moscow was 11,503,501, up from 10,382,754 recorded in the 2002 census. At the time of the official 2010 census, the ethnic makeup of the city's population whose ethnicity was known 10,835,092 people was Russian 9,930,410, 91.65%. Ukrainian 154,104, 1.42%. One Tatar 149,043, 1.38%. Armenian 106,466, 0.98%. Azerbaijani 57,123, 0.5%. Jewish 53,145, 0.5%. Belarusian 39225 0.4% Georgian 38934 0.4% Uzbek 35595 0.3% Tajik 27280 0.2% Moldovan 21699 0.2% Mordvin, 17,095, 0.2%. Chechen, 14,524, 0.1%. Chuvash, 14,313, 0.1%. Ossetian, 11,311, 0.1%. Others, 164,825, 1.6%. 668,409 people were registered from administrative databases, and could not declare an ethnicity. It is estimated that the proportion of ethnicities in this group is the same as that of the declared group. The official population of Moscow is based on those holding permanent residency. According to Russia's Federal Migration Service, Moscow holds 1.8 million official guests who have temporary residency on the basis of visas or other documentation, giving a legal population of 13.3 million. The number of illegal immigrants, the vast majority originating from Central Asia, is estimated to be an additional 1 million people, giving a total population of about 14.3 million. Total fertility rate 2009 1.22 2010 1.25 2011 1.25 2012 1.32 2013 1.33 2014 1.41 2016 1.44 births 2016 145252 11.8 per 1000 
Deaths 2016, 123,623 10.0 per 1,000 Topic. Religion Christianity is the predominant religion in the city, of which the Russian Orthodox Church is the most popular. Moscow is Russia's capital of Eastern Orthodox Christianity, which has been the country's traditional religion and was deemed a part of Russia's historical heritage in a law passed in 1997. Other religions practiced in Moscow include Armenian Apostolicism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Catholicism, Islam, Judaism, Yazidism, Old Believers, Protestantism, and Rodnovery. The Patriarch of Moscow serves as the head of the church and resides in the Danilov Monastery. Moscow was called the city of 40 times 40 churches. Gorod Soroka Sorokov Sorkve. Prior to 1917. In 1918 the Bolshevik government declared Russia a secular state, which in practice meant that religion was repressed and society was to become atheistic. During the period of 1920–1930s a great number of churches in Moscow were demolished, including historical Chudov Monastery in the Kremlin, dating from the 14th century, Kazansky Cathedral on the Red Square, the Cathedral of Christ the Savior, constructed in the 19th century in memory of a victory over Napoleon's army in 1812, and many more. This continued even after the Second World War, in 1940–1970s, when persecutions against religion in the Soviet Union became less severe. Most of the surviving churches and monasteries were closed and then used as clubs, offices, factories or even warehouses. Since the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1991 many of the destroyed churches have been restored and traditional religions are once again gaining popularity. Among the churches reconstructed in the 1990s is an impressive new Cathedral of Christ the Savior that once more has become a landmark. It was built on the site of the old demolished cathedral, where there had been a huge open swimming pool until 1994. The Moscow Mufti Council claimed that Muslims numbered around 1.5 million of 10.5 millions of the city's population in 2010. There are four mosques in the city. Moscow Cathedral Mosque has been built at the site of the former one. It was officially inaugurated on September 23, 2015. The new mosque has the capacity of 10,000 worshippers. President of Russia Vladimir Putin, President of Turkey Recep Tayyip Erdogan, President of the State of Palestine Mahmoud Abbas and local Muslim leaders participated in the inauguration ceremony of this mosque. Topic. Architecture Moscow's architecture is world-renowned. Moscow is the site of St. Basil's Cathedral, with its elegant onion domes, as well as the Cathedral of Christ the Savior and the Seven Sisters. The first Kremlin was built in the middle of the 12th century. Medieval Moscow's design was of concentric walls and intersecting radial thoroughfares. This layout, as well as Moscow's rivers, helped shape Moscow's design in subsequent centuries. The Kremlin was rebuilt in the 15th century. Its towers and some of its churches were built by Italian architects, lending the city some of the aura of the Renaissance. From the end of the 15th century, the city was embellished by masonry structures such as monasteries, palaces, walls, towers, and churches. The city's appearance had not changed much by the 18th century. Houses were made of pine and spruce logs, with shingled roofs plastered with sod or covered by birch bark. The rebuilding of Moscow in the second half of the 18th century was necessitated not only by constant fires, but also the needs of the nobility. Much of the wooden city was replaced by buildings in the classical style. For much of its architectural history, Moscow was dominated by Orthodox churches. However, the overall appearance of the city changed drastically during Soviet times, especially as a result of Joseph Stalin's large-scale effort to modernize Moscow. Stalin's plans for the city included a network of broad avenues and roadways, some of them over ten lanes wide, which, while greatly simplifying movement through the city, were constructed at the expense of a great number of historical buildings and districts. Among the many casualties of Stalin's demolitions was the Sukarev Tower, a longtime city landmark, as well as mansions and commercial buildings the city's newfound status as the capital of a deeply secular nation, made religiously significant buildings especially vulnerable to demolition. Many of the city's churches, which in most cases were some of Moscow's oldest and most prominent buildings, were destroyed. Some notable examples include the Kazan Cathedral and the Cathedral of Christ the Savior. 
During the 1990s, both were rebuilt. Many smaller churches, however, were lost. While the later Stalinist period was characterized by the curtailing of creativity and architectural innovation, the earlier post-revolutionary years saw a plethora of radical new buildings created in the city. Especially notable were the constructivist architects associated with VKHUTEMAS, responsible for such landmarks as Lenin's mausoleum. Another prominent architect was Vladimir Shukov, famous for Shukov Tower, just one of many hyperboloid towers designed by Shukov. It was built between 1919 and 1922 as a transmission tower for a Russian broadcasting company. Shukov also left a lasting legacy to the constructivist architecture of early Soviet Russia. He designed spacious elongated shop galleries, most notably the gum department store on Red Square, bridged with innovative metal and glass vaults. Perhaps the most recognizable contributions of the Stalinist period are the so-called Seven Sisters, comprising seven massive skyscrapers scattered throughout the city at about an equal distance from the Kremlin. A defining feature of Moscow's skyline, their imposing form was allegedly inspired by the Manhattan Municipal Building in New York City, and their style—with intricate exteriors and a large central spire—has been described as Stalinist Gothic architecture. All seven towers can be seen from most high points in the city, they are among the tallest constructions in central Moscow apart from the Ostankino Tower, which, when it was completed in 1967, was the highest freestanding land structure in the world and today remains the world's 72nd tallest, ranking among buildings such as the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, Taipei 101 in Taiwan and the CN Tower in Toronto, the Soviet goal of providing housing for every family, and the rapid growth of Moscow's population, led to the construction of large large, monotonous housing blocks. Most of these date from the post-Stalin era and the styles are often named after the leader then in power Brezhnev, Khrushchev, etc. They are usually badly maintained. Although the city still has some five-story apartment buildings constructed before the mid-1960s, more recent apartment buildings are usually at least nine floors tall, and have elevators. It is estimated that Moscow has over twice as many elevators as New York City and four times as many as Chicago. Moslift, one of the city's major elevator operating companies, has about 1,500 elevator mechanics on call, to release residents trapped in elevators. Stalinist era buildings, mostly found in the central part of the city, are massive and usually ornamented with socialist realism motifs that imitate classical themes. However, small churches, almost always Eastern Orthodox found across the city provide glimpses of its past. The old Arbat Street, a tourist street that was once the heart of a Bohemian area, preserves most of its buildings from prior to the 20th century. Many buildings found off the main streets of the inner city behind the Stalinist facades of Tverskaya Street, for example, are also examples of bourgeois architecture typical of Tsarist times. Ostankino Palace, Kuskovo, Uzkoi and other large estates just outside Moscow originally belonged to nobles from the Tsarist era, and some convents and monasteries, both inside and outside the city, are open to Muscovites and tourists. Attempts are being made to restore many of the city's best-kept examples of pre-Soviet architecture. These restored structures are easily spotted by their bright new colors and spotless facades. There are a few examples of notable, early Soviet avant-garde work too, such as the house of the architect Konstantin Melnikov in the Arbat area. Many of these restorations were criticized for alleged disrespect of historical authenticity. Facadism is also widely practiced. Later examples of interesting Soviet architecture are usually marked by their impressive size and the semi-modernist styles employed, such as with the Novi Arbat project, familiarly known as false teeth of Moscow and notorious for the wide-scale disruption of a historic area in central Moscow involved in the project. Plaques on house exteriors will inform passers-by that a well-known personality once lived there. Frequently, the plaques are dedicated to Soviet celebrities not well known outside or often, like with decorated generals and revolutionaries, now both inside of Russia. There are also many museum houses of famous Russian writers, composers, and artists in the city. Moscow's skyline is quickly modernizing, with several new towers under construction. In recent years, the city administration has been widely criticized for heavy destruction that has affected many historical buildings. As much as a third of historic Moscow has been destroyed in the past few years to make space for luxury apartments and hotels. 
Other historical buildings, including such landmarks as the 1930 Moskva Hotel and the 1913 department store Voyantorg, have been razed and reconstructed anew, with the inevitable loss of historical value. Critics blame the government for not enforcing conservation laws. In the last 12 years, more than 50 buildings with monument status were torn down, several of those dating back to the 17th century. Some critics also wonder if the money used for the reconstruction of raised buildings could not be used for the renovation of decaying structures, which include many works by architect Konstantin Melnikov and Mayakovskaya Metro Station. Some organizations, such as Moscow Architecture Preservation Society and Save Europe's Heritage, are trying to draw the international public attention to these problems. Topic. Parks and landmarks There are 96 parks and 18 gardens in Moscow, including four botanical gardens. There are 450 square kilometers, 170 square miles of green zones besides 100 square kilometers, 39 square miles of forests. Moscow is a very green city. If compared to other cities of comparable size in Western Europe and North America, this is partly due to a history of having green yards with trees and grass between residential buildings. There are on average 27 square meters 290 square feet of parks per person in Moscow compared with 6 for Paris, 7.5 in London and 8.6 in New York. Gorky Park, officially the Central Park of Culture and Rest named after Maxim Gorky, was founded in 1928. The main park, 689,000 square meters or 170 acres along the Moskva River contains estrades, children's attractions including the observation wheel water ponds with boats and water bicycles, dancing, tennis courts and other sports facilities. It borders the Neskuchny Garden, 408,000 square meters or 101 acres, the oldest park in Moscow and a former imperial residence, created as a result of the integration of three estates in the 18th century. The garden features the Green Theatre, one of the largest open amphitheatres in Europe, able to hold up to 15,000 people. Several parks include a section known as a Park of Culture and Rest, sometimes alongside a much wilder area. This includes parks such as Izmailovsky, Philly, and Sokolniki. Some parks are designated as forest parks. Lesa Park. Izmailovsky Park, created in 1931, is one of the largest urban parks in the world along with Richmond Park in London. Its area of 15.34 square kilometers, 5.92 square miles, is 6 times greater than that of Central Park in New York. Sokolniki Park, named after the falcon hunting that occurred there in the past, is one of the oldest parks in Moscow and has an area of 6 square kilometers, 2.3 square miles. A central circle with a large fountain is surrounded by birch, maple and elm tree alleys. A labyrinth composed of green paths lies beyond the park's ponds. Luzhny Ostrov National Park, Elk Island National Park, with a total area of more than 116 square kilometers (45 square miles), borders Sokolniki Park and was Russia's first national park. It is quite wild and is also known as the City Taiga. Elk can be seen there. Sitsin Main Botanical Garden of Academy of Sciences, founded in 1945, is the largest in Europe. It covers territory of 3.61 square kilometers, 1.39 square miles, bordering the All Russia Exhibition Center and contains a live exhibition of more than 20,000 species of plants from around the world, as well as a lab for scientific research. It contains a rosarium with 20,000 rose bushes, a dendrarium, and an oak forest with the average age of trees exceeding 100 years. There is a greenhouse taking up more than 5,000 square meters square feet of land, the All-Russian Exhibition Center, Vysorossyskij Vystavochnij Center formerly known as the All-Union Agricultural Exhibition VSKHV, and later Exhibition of Achievements of the National Economy VDNKH, though officially named a permanent trade show, is one of the most prominent examples of Stalinist-era monumental architecture. Among the large spans of recreational park areas are scores of elaborate pavilions, each representing either a branch of Soviet industry and science or a USSR republic. Even though during the 1990s it was, and for some parts still is, misused as a gigantic shopping center most of the pavilions are rented out for small businesses, it still retains the bulk of its architectural landmarks, including two monumental fountains Stone Flower and Friendship of Nations and a 360 degrees panoramic cinema. 
In 2014 the park returned to the name Exhibition of Achievements of National Economy, and in the same year huge renovation works had been started. Lilac Park, founded in 1958, has a permanent sculpture display and a large rosarium. Moscow has always been a popular destination for tourists. Some of the more famous attractions include the city's UNESCO World Heritage Site, Moscow Kremlin and Red Square, which was built between the 14th and 17th centuries. The Church of the Ascension at Kolomenskoy, which dates from 1532, is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site and another popular attraction. Near the new Tretiakov Gallery there is a sculpture garden, Museon, often called the Graveyard of Fallen Monuments that displays statues of the former Soviet Union that were removed from their place after its dissolution. Other attractions include the Moscow Zoo, a zoological garden in two sections the valleys of two streams linked by a bridge, with nearly a thousand species and more than 6,500 specimens. Each year, the zoo attracts more than 1.2 million visitors. Many of Moscow's parks and landscaped gardens are protected natural environments. Topic. Moscow rings Moscow's road system is centered roughly on the Kremlin at the heart of the city. From there, roads generally span outwards to intersect with a sequence of circular roads. Rings. The first and innermost major ring, Bulvernoy Koltso Boulevard Ring, was built at the former location of the 16th century city wall around what used to be called Balai Gorod White Town. The Bulvernoy Koltso is technically not a ring, it does not form a complete circle, but instead a horseshoe like arc that begins at the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour and ends at the Yauza River. The second primary ring, located outside the bell end of the Boulevard Ring, is the Sadovoy Koltso. Garden ring. Like the Boulevard Ring, the Garden Ring follows the path of a 16th century wall that used to encompass part of Moscow. The third ring, the third transport ring, was completed in 2003 as a high speed freeway. The fourth transport ring, another freeway, is cancelled in 2011. Aside from aforementioned hierarchy, Line 5 of Moscow Metro is a circle-shaped looped subway line hence the name Koltsovaya Linea, ring line, which is located between the Sadovoy Koltso and third transport ring. September 10, 2016, Moscow Central Circle Renovated Railroad former Moskovskaya Okruznaya Zelezhnaya Doroga was introduced as 14th line of Moscow Metro. The railroad itself was in use since 1907, but before the renovation it was a non-electrified railroad for transit needs of fueled locomotives only. The outermost ring within Moscow is the Moscow Ring Road often called MKAD, acronym word for Russian Moskovska Kolcheva Avtomobilna Doroga, which forms the cultural boundary of the city, was established in the 1950s. It is to note the method of building the road usage of ground elevation instead of concrete columns throughout the whole way formed a wall-like barrier that obstacles building roads under the MKAD highway itself. Before 2012 expansion of Moscow, MKAD was considered an approximate border for Moscow boundaries. Outside Moscow, some of the roads encompassing the city continue to follow this circular pattern seen inside city limits, with notable example of Batonka Road, originally made of concrete pads. Topic. Transport rings in Moscow Topic. Life and culture Topic. Overview One of the most notable art museums in Moscow is the Tretiakov Gallery, which was founded by Pavel Tretiakov, a wealthy patron of the arts who donated a large private collection to the city. The Tretiakov Gallery is split into two buildings. The old Tretiakov Gallery, the original gallery in the Tretiakovskaya area on the south bank of the Moskva River, houses works in the classic Russian tradition. The works of famous pre-revolutionary painters, such as Ilya Repin, as well as the works of early Russian icon painters can be found here. Visitors can even see rare originals by early 15th century iconographer Andrei Rublev. The new Tretiakov Gallery, created in Soviet times, mainly contains the works of Soviet artists, as well as of a few contemporary paintings, but there is some overlap with the old Tretiakov Gallery for early 20th century art. The new gallery includes a small reconstruction of Vladimir Tatlin's famous monument to the Third International and a mixture of other avant garde works by artists like Kazimir Malevich and Wassily Kandinsky. Socialist realism features can also be found within the halls of the new Tretiakov Gallery. 
Another art museum in the city of Moscow is the Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts, which was founded by, among others, the father of Marina Sveteva. The Pushkin Museum is similar to the British Museum in London in that its halls are a cross-section of exhibits on world civilizations, with many copies of ancient sculptures. However, it also hosts paintings from every major Western era. Works by Claude Monet, Paul Cezanne, and Pablo Picasso are present in the museum's collection. The State Historical Museum of Russia Muse is a museum of Russian history located between Red Square and Manej Square in Moscow. Its exhibitions range from relics of the prehistoric tribes inhabiting present-day Russia, through priceless artworks acquired by members of the Romanov dynasty. The total number of objects in the museum's collection numbers is several million. The Polytechnical Museum, founded in 1872 is the largest technical museum in Russia, offering a wide array of historical inventions and technological achievements, including humanoid automata from the 18th century and the first Soviet computers. Its collection contains more than 160,000 items. The Borodino Panorama Museum located on Kutuzov Avenue provides an opportunity for visitors to experience being on a battlefield with a 360 degrees diorama. It is a part of the large historical memorial commemorating the victory in the Patriotic War of 1812 over Napoleon's army, that includes also the Triumphal Arch, erected in 1827. There is also a military history museum that includes statues, and military hardware. Moscow is the heart of the Russian performing arts, including ballet and film, with 68 museums 103 theaters, 132 cinemas and 24 concert halls. Among Moscow's theaters and ballet studios is the Bolshoi Theater and the Malyi Theater as well as Vaktangov Theater and Moscow Art Theater. The Moscow International Performance Arts Center, opened in 2003, also known as Moscow International House of Music, is known for its performances in classical music. It has the largest organ in Russia installed in Svetlanov Hall. There are also two large circuses in Moscow, Moscow State Circus and Moscow Circus on Svetnoy Boulevard named after Yuri Nikulin. Memorial Museum of Astronautics under the Monument to the Conquerors of Space in the end of Cosmonauts Alley is the central memorial place for the Russian space officials. The Mosfilm studio was at the heart of many classic films, as it is responsible for both artistic and mainstream productions. However, despite the continued presence and reputation of internationally renowned Russian filmmakers, the once prolific native studios are much quieter. Rare and historical films may be seen in the Salu Cinema, where films from the Museum of Cinema collection are shown regularly. The Shusev State Museum of Architecture is the National Museum of Russian Architecture by the name of the architect Alexei Shusev near the Kremlin area. Sports Over 500 Olympic sports champions lived in the city by 2005. Moscow is home to 63 stadiums besides eight football and 11 light athletics manèges, of which Luzhniki Stadium is the largest and the fourth biggest in Europe. It hosted the 1998-99 UEFA Cup, 2007-08 UEFA Champions League Finals, and the 1980 Summer Olympics, and will host the 2018 FIFA World Cup with six games total. Forty other sport complexes are located within the city, including 24 with artificial ice. The Olympic Stadium was the world's first indoor arena for bandy and hosted the Bandy World Championship twice. Moscow was again the host of the competition in 2010, this time in Krylatskoy. That arena has also hosted the World Speed Skating Championships. There are also seven horse racing tracks in Moscow, of which Central Moscow Hippodrome, founded in 1834, is the largest. Moscow was the host city of the 1980 Summer Olympics, with the yachting events being held at Tallinn, in present-day Estonia. Large sports facilities and the main international airport, Sheremetyevo Terminal 2, were built in preparation for the 1980 Summer Olympics. Moscow had made a bid for the 2012 Summer Olympics. However, when final voting commenced on July 6, 2005, Moscow was the first city to be eliminated from further rounds. The Games were awarded to London. The most titled ice hockey team in the Soviet Union and in the world, HCCSKA Moscow comes from Moscow. Other big ice hockey clubs from Moscow are HC Dynamo Moscow, which was the second most titled team in the Soviet Union, and HC Spartak Moscow. 
The most titled Soviet, Russian, and one of the most titled Euroleague clubs, is the basketball club from Moscow PBC CSKA Moscow. Moscow hosted the Eurobasket in 1953 and 1965. Moscow had more winners at the USSR and Russian Chess Championship than any other city. The most titled volleyball team in the Soviet Union and in Europe CEV Champions League is VC CSKA Moscow. In football, FC Spartak Moscow has won more championship titles in the Russian Premier League than any other team. They were second only to FC Dynamo Kiev in the Soviet Union. PFC CSKA Moscow was the first Russian football team to win a UEFA title. FC Lokomotiv Moscow, FC Dynamo Moscow and FC Torpedo Moscow are other professional football teams also based in Moscow. Moscow houses other prominent football, ice hockey, and basketball teams. Because sports organizations in the Soviet Union were once highly centralized, two of the best union-level teams represented defense and law enforcing agencies, the Armed Forces CSKA and the Ministry of Internal Affairs Dynamo. There were army and police teams in most major cities. As a result, Spartak, CSKA, and Dynamo were among the best-funded teams in the USSR. Because of Moscow's cold local climate, winter sports have a following. Many of Moscow's large parks offer marked trails for skiing and frozen ponds for skating. Moscow hosts the annual Kremlin Cup, a popular tennis tournament on both the WTA and ATP tours. It is one of the 10 Tier 1 events on the women's tour and a host of Russian players feature every year. SC Olympiaski hosted the Eurovision Song Contest 2009, the first and so far the only Eurovision Song Contest arranged in Russia. Slava Moscow is a professional rugby club, competing in the National Professional Rugby League. Former rugby league heavyweights RC Lokomotiv have entered the same league as of 2011. The Luzhniki Stadium also hosted the 2013 Rugby World Cup Sevens. In Bandy, one of the most successful clubs in the world is 20 times Russian league champions Dynamo Moscow. They have also won the World Cup twice and European Cup six times. MFK Dynamo Moskva is one of the major futsal clubs in Europe. Russia was given the right to host the 2018 FIFA World Cup, and in Moscow, the Luzhniki Stadium will have an increased capacity, by almost 10,000 new seats, in addition to a further two stadiums that will be built, the Dynamo Stadium, and the Spartak Stadium. Together these will have a capacity of at least 40,000 seats. Topic football clubs Topic 2018 FIFA World Cup In Moscow Two of Moscow's stadiums will serve as venues for the FIFA World Cup games, the Luzhniki Stadium and the Okriti Arena. Luzhniki Stadium is the largest stadium in the country. It has a capacity of up to 81,000 spectators. The stadium has 102 VIP boxes, 2,000 seats for media representatives and 300 seats for people with disabilities. Okriti Arena has a capacity of 45,360 seats. It is the home stadium to FC Spartak Moscow. According to the FIFA and UEFA regulations, a stadium cannot use a sponsored name during official international matches between clubs and national teams, so the stadium will be known as the Spartak Stadium. The FIFA Fan Fest in Moscow was originally planned to be held near the building of Moscow State University. The initiative was met with severe criticism from a large number of students and faculty. They claimed that the event would be disruptive to the examination period during the World Cup. A compromise solution was found, the Fan Fest venue will be located next to MSU but will not include the university grounds, with the main stage located 310 meters away from the main building of MSU. The capacity of the Fan Fest was reduced from 40,000 to 25,000 people. Other 2018 FIFA World Cup facilities that were initially supposed to be located on the university grounds will not be placed there. The 2018 FIFA World Cup will give a powerful impetus to the development of sports in the city. The 11 training grounds built in Moscow for the upcoming World Cup are already being used for training by over 10,000 young athletes. Each of the training grounds is located next to a new children's and youth sports school. After the FIFA World Cup, they will be its legacy, as these grounds can be already used for training by over 10,000 children. Topic entertainment The city is full of clubs, restaurants and bars. Tverskaya Street is also one of the busiest shopping streets in Moscow. 
The adjoining Tretiakovsky Proyezd, also south of Tverskaya Street, in Katai Gorod, is host to upmarket boutique stores such as Bulgari, Tiffany & Co., Armani, Prada and Bentley. Nightlife in Moscow has moved on since Soviet times and today the city has many of the world's largest nightclubs. Clubs, bars, creative spaces and restaurants turned into dance floors are flooding Moscow streets with new openings every year. The hottest area is located around the old chocolate factory, where bars, nightclubs, galleries, cafes and restaurants are placed. Topic politics Moscow is the seat of power for the Russian Federation. At the center of the city, in the central administrative okrug, is the Moscow Kremlin, which houses the home of the President of Russia as well as national governmental facilities. This includes military headquarters and the headquarters of the Federal Security Service. Moscow, like with any national capital, is also the host of all the foreign embassies and diplomats representing a multitude of nations in Russia. Moscow is designated as one of three federal cities of Russia, the others being St. Petersburg and Sevastopol. Among the 85 federal subjects of Russia, Moscow represents the most populated one and the second smallest one in terms of area. Moscow is located within the Central Economic Region, one of 12 regions within Russia with similar economic goals. The basic law of the city is the Charter of Moscow that was adopted in 1995. Topic. Executive The mayor of Moscow is the leading official in the executive, leading the government of Moscow, which is the highest organ of executive power. Topic. Moscow City Duma The Moscow City Duma is the City Duma city council or local parliament and local laws must be approved by it. It includes 45 members who are elected for a five-year term on single-mandate constituency basis. Topic. Administrative divisions The entire city of Moscow is headed by one mayor Sergei Sobyanin. The city of Moscow is divided into 12 administrative okrugs and 123 districts. The Russian capital's town planning development began to show as early as the 12th century, when the city was founded. The central part of Moscow grew by consolidating with suburbs in line with medieval principles of urban development, when strong fortress walls would gradually spread along the circle streets of adjacent new settlements. The first circular defense walls set the trajectory of Moscow's rings, laying the groundwork for the future planning of the Russian capital. The following fortifications served as the city's circular defense boundaries at some point in history, the Kremlin Walls, Zemlyanoy Gorod earthwork town, the Kamer Kolosky Rampart, the Garden Ring, and the Small Railway Ring. The Moscow Ring Road MKAD has been Moscow's boundary since 1960. Also in the form of a circle are the main Moscow subway line, the Ring Line, and the so-called Third Automobile Ring, which was completed in 2005. Hence, the characteristic radial circle planning continues to define Moscow's further development. However, contemporary Moscow has also engulfed a number of territories outside the MKAD, such as Solantsevo, Butovo, and the town of Zelenograd. A part of Moscow Oblast's territory was merged into Moscow on July 1, 2012. As a result, Moscow is no longer fully surrounded by Moscow Oblast and now also has a border with Kaluga Oblast. In all, Moscow gained about 1,500 square kilometers (580 square miles) and 230,000 inhabitants. Moscow's mayor Sergei Sobyanin lauded the expansion that will help Moscow and the neighboring region, a mega city of 20 million people, to develop harmonically. All administrative okrugs and districts have their own coats of arms and flags as well as individual heads of the area. In addition to the districts, there are territorial units with special status. These usually include areas with small or no permanent populations. Such is the case with the All Russia Exhibition Center, the Botanical Garden, large parks, and industrial zones. In recent years, some territories have been merged with different districts. There are no ethnic-specific regions in Moscow, as in the Chinatowns that exist in some North American and East Asian cities. And although districts are not designated by income, as with most cities, those areas that are closer to the city center, metro stations or green zones are considered more prestigious. Moscow also hosts some of the government bodies of Moscow Oblast, although the city itself is not a part of the oblast. 
Topic: Economy. Topic: Overview. Moscow has one of the largest municipal economies in Europe and it accounts more than one-fifth of Russia's gross domestic product GDP. As of 2016, the nominal GRP in Moscow reached 14. $3 trillion $250 billion, $642 billion in purchasing power, $20,500 per capita, $52,000 per capita in purchasing power. Moscow has the lowest unemployment rate of all federal subjects of Russia, standing at just 1% in 2010, compared to the national average of 7%. The average gross monthly wage in the city is $60,000 in purchasing power, which is almost twice the national average of $34,000 $1,400 in purchasing power, and the highest among the federal subjects of Russia. Moscow is the financial center of Russia and home to the country's largest banks and many of its largest companies, such as natural gas giant Gazprom. Moscow accounts for 17% of retail sales in Russia and for 13% of all construction activity in the country. Since the 1998 Russian financial crisis, business sectors in Moscow have shown exponential rates of growth. Many new business centers and office buildings have been built in recent years, but Moscow still experiences shortages in office space. As a result, many former industrial and research facilities are being reconstructed to become suitable for office use. Overall, economic stability has improved in recent years, nonetheless, crime and corruption continue still hinder business development. The Cherkasovsky marketplace was the largest marketplace in Europe, with a daily turnover of about $30 million and about 10,000 vendors from different countries including China, Turkey, Azerbaijan and India. It was administratively divided into 12 parts and covers a wide sector of the city. Since July 2009 it has been closed. In 2008, Moscow had 74 billionaires with an average wealth of $5.9 billion, which placed it above New York's 71 billionaires. However, as of 2009, there were 27 billionaires in Moscow compared with New York's 55 billionaires. Overall, Russia lost 52 billionaires during the recession. Topping the list of Russia's billionaires in 2009 is Mikhail Prokhorov with $9.5 billion, ahead of the more famous Roman Abramovic with $8.5 billion, in second place. Prokhorov's holding company, Onyxum, Onyxum Group, owns huge assets in hydrogen energy, nanotechnology, traditional energy, precious metals sector, while Abramovic, since selling his oil company Sibneft to Russian state-controlled gas giant Gazprom in 2005, has bought up steel and mining assets. He also owns Chelsea FC. Russia's richest woman remains Yelena Baturina, the 50-year-old second wife of Moscow Mayor Yuri Luzhkov. Oleg Deripaska, the first on this list in 2008 with $28 billion, was only 10th in 2009 with $3.5 billion. Based on Forbes's 2011 list of the world's billionaires, Moscow is the city with the most billionaires in the world, with 79 from 115 in all of Russia. The Nouveau Riche, also called the New Russians, often in a derogatory sense, have a reputation for flaunting their wealth, the avenues for doing so have also increased in recent times at the many haute couture and haute cuisine spots in Moscow. In 2018, Moscow was a host city to 12 games of the FIFA World Cup. The tournament served as an additional driver for the city economy, its sports and tourist infrastructure, and for land improvement in the city. Topic. Industry. Primary industries in Moscow include the chemical, metallurgy, food, textile, furniture, energy production, software development and machinery industries. The Mil Moscow helicopter plant is one of the leading producers of military and civil helicopters in the world. Khrunichev State Research and Production Space Center produces various space equipment, including modules for space stations Mir, Salyut and the ISS as well as proton launch vehicles and military ICBMs. Suhoi, Ilyushin, Mikoyan, Tupolev and Yakovlev aircraft design bureaus also situated in Moscow. 
NPO Energomash, producing the rocket engines for Russian and American space programs, as well as Lavochkin Design Bureau, which built fighter planes during World War II, but switched to space probes since the space race, are in nearby Kimki, an independent city in Moscow Oblast that have largely been enclosed by Moscow from its sides. Automobile plants ZIL and AZLK, as well as the Voidovich Rail Vehicle Plant, are situated in Moscow and Metrovagonmash Metro Wagon Plant is located just outside the city limits. The Polyet Moscow watch factory produces military, professional and sport watches well known in Russia and abroad. Yuri Gagarin in his trip into space used Shtermansky produced by this factory. The Elektrozavod factory was the first transformer factory in Russia. The Crystal Distillery is the oldest distillery in Russia producing vodka types, including Stoliknaya, while wines are produced at Moscow wine plants, including the Moscow Interrepublican Vinery. The Moscow Jewelry Factory and the Jewelerprom are producers of jewelry in Russia. Jewelerprom used to produce the exclusive Order of Victory, awarded to those aiding the Soviet Union's Red Army during World War II. There are other industries located just outside the city of Moscow, as well as microelectronic industries in Zelenograd, including Russelectronics companies. Gazprom, the largest extractor of natural gas in the world and the largest Russian company, has head offices also in Moscow, as well as other oil, gas and electricity companies. Moscow hosts headquarters of the many of telecommunication and technology companies, including 1C, ABBYY, Beeline, Kaspersky Lab, Mail, Ru Group, Megaphone, MTS, Rambler & Co., Rostelecom, Yandex, and Yoda. Some industry is being transferred out of the city to improve the ecological state of the city. Topic cost of living During Soviet times, apartments were lent to people by the government according to the square meters per person norm some groups, including people's artists, heroes and prominent scientists had bonuses according to their honors. Private ownership of apartments was limited until the 1990s, when people were permitted to secure property rights to the places they inhabited. Since the Soviet era, estate owners have had to pay the service charge for their residences, a fixed amount based on persons per living area. The price of real estate in Moscow continues to rise. Today, one could expect to pay $4,000 on average per square meter, 11 square feet on the outskirts of the city or $6,500 to $8,000 per square meter in a prestigious district. The price sometimes may exceed $40,000 per square meter in a flat. It costs about $1,200 per month to rent a one-bedroom apartment and about $1,000 per month for a studio in the center of Moscow. A typical one-bedroom apartment is about 30 square meters 320 square feet. A typical two-bedroom apartment is 45 square meters 480 square feet. And a typical three-bedroom apartment is 70 square meters 750 square feet. Many cannot move out of their apartments, especially if a family lives in a two-room apartment originally granted by the state during the Soviet era. Some city residents have attempted to cope with the cost of living by renting their apartments while staying in dachas country houses outside the city. In 2006, Mercer Human Resources Consulting named Moscow the world's most expensive city for expatriate employees, ahead of perennial winter Tokyo, due to the stable Russian ruble as well as increasing housing prices within the city. Moscow also ranked first in the 2007 edition and 2008 edition of the survey. However, Tokyo has overtaken Moscow as the most expensive city in the world, placing Moscow at third behind Osaka in second place. In 2008, Moscow ranked top on the list of most expensive cities for the third year in a row. In 2014, according to Forbes, Moscow was ranked the ninth most expensive city in the world. Forbes ranked Moscow the second most expensive city the year prior. Topic: Science and Education. There are 1,696 high schools in Moscow, as well as 91 colleges. Besides these, there are 222 institutions of higher education, including 60 state universities and the Lomonosov Moscow State University, which was founded in 1755. The main university building located in Vorobyovy Gori is 240 meters tall and when completed, was the tallest building on the continent. The university has over 30,000 undergraduate and 7,000 postgraduate students, who have a choice of 29 faculties and 450 departments for study. 
Additionally, approximately 10,000 high school students take courses at the university, while over 2,000 researchers work. The Moscow State University Library contains over 9 million books, making it one of the largest libraries in all of Russia. Its acclaim throughout the international academic community has meant that over 11,000 international students have graduated from the university, with many coming to Moscow to become fluent in the Russian language. The I.M. Sessionov First Moscow State Medical University named after Ivan Sessionov or formerly known as Moscow Medical Academy is a medical university situated in Moscow, Russia. It was founded in 1785 as the faculty of the Moscow State University. It is a Russian federal agency for health and social development. It is one of the largest medical universities in Russia and Europe. More than 9,200 students are enrolled in 115 academic departments. It offers courses for postgraduate studies. Moscow is one of the financial centers of the Russian Federation and CIS countries and is known for its business schools. Among them are the Finance Academy under the government of RF, Plekhanov Russian University of Economics, the State University of Management, and the State University, Higher School of Economics. They offer undergraduate degrees in management, finance, accounting, marketing, real estate and economic theory, as well as master's programs and MBAs. Most of them have branches in other regions of Russia and countries around the world. Bauman Moscow State Technical University, founded in 1830, is located in the center of Moscow and provides 18,000 undergraduate and 1,000 postgraduate students with an education in science and engineering, offering technical degrees. Since it opened enrollment to students from outside Russia in 1991, Bauman Moscow State Technical University has increased its number of international students up to 200. The Moscow Conservatory, founded in 1866, is a prominent music school in Russia whose graduates include Sergei Rachmaninoff, Alexander Skriabin, Aram Kachaturian, M. S. Tislav Rostropovich, and Alfred Schnitke. The Gerasimov All-Russian State Institute of Cinematography, abbreviated as VGIK, is the world's oldest educational institution in cinematography, founded by Vladimir Gardin in 1919. Sergei Eisenstein, Sevalid Pudovkin, and Alexei Batilov were among its most distinguished professors and Mikhail Vartanov, Sergei Parajanov, Andrei Tarkovsky, Nikita Mikhalkov, Eldar Ryazanov, Alexander Sokarov, Yuri Norstein, Alexander Petrov, Vasily Shukshin, Konrad Wolf among graduates. Moscow State Institute of International Relations, founded in 1944, remains Russia's best-known school of international relations and diplomacy, with six schools focused on international relations. Approximately 4,500 students make up the university's student body and over 700,000 Russian and foreign language books—of which 20,000 are considered rare— can be found in the library of the Moscow State Institute of International Relations. Other institutions are the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, also known as Phystech, the Fyodorov Eye Microsurgery Complex, founded in 1988 by Russian eye surgeon Svyatoslav Fyodorov, the Moscow Aviation Institute, the Moscow Motorway Institute, State Technical University, and the Moscow Engineering Physics Institute. Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology has taught numerous Nobel Prize winners, including Pyotr Kapitsa, Nikolai Semyonov, Lev Landau and Alexander Prokhorov, while the Moscow Engineering Physics Institute is known for its research in nuclear physics. The highest Russian military school is the Combined Arms Academy of the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation. Although Moscow has a number of famous Soviet-era higher educational institutions, most of which are more oriented towards engineering or the fundamental sciences, in recent years Moscow has seen a growth in the number of commercial and private institutions that offer classes in business and management. Many state institutions have expanded their education scope and introduced new courses or departments. Institutions in Moscow, as well as the rest of post-Soviet Russia, have begun to offer new international certificates and postgraduate degrees, including the Master of Business Administration. Student exchange programs with different especially, European countries have also become widespread in Moscow's universities, while schools within the Russian capital also offer seminars, lectures and courses for corporate employees and businessmen. Moscow is one of the largest science centers in Russia. The headquarters of the Russian Academy of Sciences are located in Moscow as well as research and applied science institutions. 
The Kurchatov Institute, Russia's leading research and development institution in the fields of nuclear energy, where the first nuclear reactor in Europe was built, the Landau Institute for Theoretical Physics, Institute for Theoretical and Experimental Physics, Kapitsa Institute for Physical Problems and Steklov Institute of Mathematics are all situated in Moscow. There are 452 libraries in the city, including 168 for children. The Russian State Library, founded in 1862, is the National Library of Russia. The library is home to over 275 kilometers (171 miles) of shelves and 42 million items, including over 17 million books and serial volumes, 13 million journals, 350,000 music scores and sound records, and 150,000 maps, making it the largest library in Russia and one of the largest in the world. Items in 247 languages comprise 29% of the collection. The State Public Historical Library, founded in 1863, is the largest library specializing in Russian history. Its collection contains 4 million items in 112 languages, including 47 languages of the former USSR, mostly on Russian and world history, heraldry, numismatics, and the history of science. In regard to primary and secondary education, in 2011, Clifford J. Levy of the New York Times wrote, "Moscow has some strong public schools, but the system as a whole is dispiriting, in part because it is being corroded by the corruption that is a post-Soviet scourge." Parents often pay bribes to get their children admitted to better public schools. There are additional payoffs for good grades. Transportation Air There are five primary commercial airports serving Moscow. Sheremetyevo International Airport Domodedovo International Airport DME Vinukovo International Airport VKO Zhukovsky International Airport ZIA Ostafivo International Airport OSF Sheremetyevo International Airport is the most common entry point for foreign visitors handling 60% of all international flights It is also a home to all SkyTeam members and the main hub for Aeroflot itself a member of SkyTeam Domodedovo International Airport is the leading airport in Russia in terms of passenger throughput, and is the primary gateway to long-haul domestic and CIS destinations and its international traffic rivals Sheremetyevo. Most of Star Alliance members use Domodedovo as their international hub. Vinukovo International Airport handles flights of Turkish Airlines, Lufthansa, Wizz Air and others. Ostafivo International Airport caters primarily to business aviation. Moscow's airports vary in distances from the MKAD Beltway. Domodedovo is the farthest at 22 kilometers (14 miles). Vinukovo is 11 kilometers (7 miles). Sheremetyevo is 10 kilometers (6 miles), and Ostafivo, the nearest, is about 8 kilometers (5.0 miles) from MKAD. There are a number of smaller airports close to Moscow, 19 in Moscow Oblast, such as Miachkova Airport. That are intended for private aircraft, helicopters and charters. Water Moscow has two passenger terminals, South River Terminal and North River Terminal or Rechnoy Voxel, on the river and regular ship routes and cruises along the Moskva and Oka rivers, which are used mostly for entertainment. The North River Terminal, built in 1937, is the main hub for long-range river routes. There are three freight ports serving Moscow. Railway Several train stations serve the city. Moscow's nine rail terminals or Voxels are Belorusky Rail Terminal Kazansky Rail Terminal Kievsky Rail Terminal Kursky Rail Terminal Leningradsky Rail Terminal Paveletsky Rail Terminal Rysky Rail Terminal Savyalovsky Rail Terminal Yaroslavsky Rail Terminal The terminals are located close to the city center, along the Metro Ring Line 5 or close to it, and connect to a metro line to the center of town. Each station handles trains from different parts of Europe and Asia. There are many smaller railway stations in Moscow. As train tickets are cheap, they are the preferred mode of traveling for Russians, especially when departing to St. Petersburg, Russia's second largest city. 
Moscow is the western terminus of the Trans-Siberian Railway, which traverses nearly 9,300 kilometers (5,800 miles) of Russian territory to Vladivostok on the Pacific coast. Suburbs and satellite cities are connected by commuter elektrichka (electric rail) network. Elektrichkas depart from each of these terminals to the nearby up to 140 kilometers or 87 miles large railway stations. During the 2010s, the little ring of the Moscow Railway was converted to be used for frequent passenger service. It is fully integrated with Moscow Metro. The passenger service started on September 10, 2016. There is a connecting railway line on the north side of the town that connects Beloruski Terminal with other railway lines. This is used by some suburban trains. The greater ring of the Moscow Railway forms a ring around the main part of Moscow. Metro Moscow Metro system is famous for its art, murals, mosaics, and ornate chandeliers. It started operation in 1935 and immediately became the centerpiece of the transportation system. More than that it was a Stalinist device to awe and reward the populace, and give them an appreciation of Soviet realist art. It became the prototype for future Soviet large-scale technologies. Lazar Kaganovich was in charge, he designed the subway so that citizens would absorb the values and ethos of Stalinist civilization as they rode. The artwork of the 13 original stations became nationally and internationally famous. For example, the Sverdlov Square subway station featured porcelain bas-reliefs depicting the daily life of the Soviet peoples, and the bas-reliefs at the Dynamo Stadium sports complex glorified sports and the physical prowess of the powerful new Homo Sovieticus. Soviet man, the metro was touted as the symbol of the new social order, a sort of communist cathedral of engineering modernity. Soviet workers did the labor and the artwork, but the main engineering designs, routes, and construction plans were handled by specialists recruited from the London underground. The Britons called for tunneling instead of the cut and cover technique, the use of escalators instead of lifts, and designed the routes and the rolling stock. The paranoia of Stalin and the NKVD was evident when the secret police arrested numerous British engineers for espionage, that is for gaining an in-depth knowledge of the city's physical layout. Engineers for the Metropolitan Vickers Electrical Company were given a show trial and deported in 1933, ending the role of British business in the USSR. Today, the Moscow Metro comprises 12 lines, mostly underground with a total of 203 stations. The metro is one of the deepest subway systems in the world, for instance the Park Pobody Station, completed in 2003, at 84 metres 276 feet underground, has the longest escalators in Europe. The Moscow Metro is one of the world's busiest metro systems, serving about 10 million passengers daily, 300 million people every month facing serious transportation problems, Moscow has plans for expanding its metro. In 2016, the authorities launched a new Circle Metro Railway that contributed to solving transportation issues. Moscow Central Circle Moscow Central Circle is a 54-kilometer-long urban metro railway orbital line that encircles historical Moscow. It was built alongside of Little Ring of the Moscow Railway, taking some of its tracks into itself as well. The MCC opened for passenger use on September 10, 2016. The line is operated by the Moscow government-owned company MKZD through the Moscow Metro, with the federal government-owned Russian Railways selected as the operation subcontractor. The track infrastructure and most platforms are owned by Russian Railways, while most station buildings are owned by MKZD. Topic: <laughs> Bus, electro bus and trolleybus. As metro stations outside the city center are far apart in comparison to other cities, up to 4 kilometers (2.5 miles), a bus network radiates from each station to the surrounding residential zones. Moscow has a bus terminal for long-range and intercity passenger buses, Central Bus Terminal, with daily turnover of about 25,000 passengers, serving about 40% of long-range bus routes in Moscow. Every major street in the city is served by at least one bus route. Many of these routes are doubled by a trolleybus route and have trolley wires over them. 
with the total line length of almost 600 kilometers 370 miles of single wire eight depots 104 routes and 1740 vehicles the moscow trolleybus system was the largest in the world but municipal authority headed by sergey sobyanin began to destroy trolleybus system in moscow at 2014 due to corruption and planned replacement of trolleybuses by electrobuses However, there is still no one trolleybus route replaced by Electrobus, and a lot of former trolleybus routes, that was replaced by diesel buses. At 2018 Moscow trolleybus system have only four depots and dozens kilometers of unused wires. Almost all trolleybus wires inside Garden Ring was cut in 2016 2017 due to reconstruction of Central Streets. Moya Ulitsa. Opened on November 15, 1933 it is also the world's sixth oldest operating trolleybus system. In 2018 the vehicle companies Kamaz and Gaz have won the Moskertrans tender for delivering 200 electric buses and 62 ultra-fast charging stations to the city transport system. The manufacturers will be responsible for the quality and reliable operation of the buses and charging stations for the next 15 years. The city will be procuring only electric buses as of 2021, replacing the diesel bus fleet gradually. Russia will become the leader amongst the European cities in terms of electric and gas fuel share in public transport by 2019, according to expectations. Monorail The Moscow Metro operates a short monorail line. The line connects Timuryazevskaya metro station and Ulitsa Sergia Eisensteina, passing close to VVTs. The line opened in 2004. No additional fare is needed first metro monorail transfer in 90 minutes does not charge. Tram Moscow has an extensive tram system, which first opened in 1899. The newest line was built in 1984. Its daily usage by Muscovites is low, making up for approximately 5% of trips, because many vital connections in the network have been withdrawn. Trams still remain important in some districts as feeders to metro stations. The trams also provide important cross-links between metro lines, for example between Universitet station of Sokolnicheskaya line, number one red line and Profsoyaznaya station of kaluzhsko rizskaya line, number six orange line or between Voikovskaya and Strogino. There are three tram networks in the city. Krasnopresnenskoy depot network with the westernmost point at Strogino depot location and the easternmost point near platform Dmitrovskaya. This network became separated in 1973, but until 1997 it could easily have been reconnected by about 1 km .62 miles of track and three switches. The network has the highest usage in Moscow and no weak points based on turnover except to depot lane passengers serviced by bus and tram ring at Dmitrovskaya because now it is neither a normal transfer point nor a repair terminal. The Opikov depot services the southwestern part from the Varshavsky lane, some Faropolsky Boulevard in the east to the Universitet station in the west and Boulevard lane at the center. This network is connected only by the four-way Dubininskaya and Kozhevnicheskaya streets. A second connection by Vostoknaya Eastern Street was withdrawn in 1987 due to fire at Dinamo plant and has not been recovered, and remains lost at 1992. The network may be serviced anyway by another depot now Route 35, 38. Main three depot networks with railway gate and tram repair plant. In addition, tram advocates have suggested that the new rapid transit services Metro to City, Butovo Light Metro, Monorail would be more effective as at grade tram lines and that the current problems with trams are only due to poor management and operation, not the technical properties of trams. New tram models have been developed for the Moscow network despite the lack of expansion. Topic. Taxi. The taxi service market in Moscow has changed dramatically over the years 2014-2015. New technology and service platforms Yandex, Taxi, Uber and Get X Getaxi displaced many private drivers and small service providers. By the beginning of 2015 newcomers were servicing more than 50% of all taxi orders in Moscow and are still rapidly growing. A taxi can be called using a smartphone, tablet or PC in 5-15 minutes. 
Commercial taxi services are available. In addition, route taxis are in widespread use. Topic. Roads There are over 2.6 million cars in the city daily. Recent years have seen growth in the number of cars, which have caused traffic jams and lack of parking space to become major problems. The Moscow Ring Road MKAD, along with the 3rd Transport Ring and the cancelled 4th Transport Ring, is one of only three freeways that run within Moscow city limits. There are several other roadway systems that form concentric circles around the city. Topic. Sharing system Moscow has different vehicle sharing options that are sponsored by the local government. There are several car sharing companies car sharing which are in charge of providing cars to the population. To drive the automobiles, the user has to book them through the app of the owning company. In 2018 the mayor Sergei Sobyanin said the Moscow's car sharing system has become the biggest in Europe in terms of vehicle fleet. Every day about 25,000 people use this service. Another sharing system is bike sharing of a fleet formed by 3,000 traditional and electrical bicycles. The Delisimocat is a new sharing service that provides electrical scooters. There are companies that provide different vehicles to the population in proximity to Moscow's big parks. Topic. Future development The Moscow International Business Center is a projected new part of central Moscow. Situated in Presnensky district, located at the Third Ring, the Moscow city area is under intense development. The goal of MIBC is to create a zone, the first in Russia, and in all of Eastern Europe, that will combine business activity, living space and entertainment. The project was conceived by the Moscow government in 1992. The construction of Moscow City takes place on the Krasnopresnenskaya embankment. The whole project takes up to 1 square kilometer 250 acres. The area is the only spot in downtown Moscow that can accommodate a project of this magnitude. Today, most of the buildings there are old factories and industrial complexes. The Federation Tower, completed in 2016, is the tallest building in Europe. Also to be included in the project are a water park and other recreational facilities, business and entertainment complexes, office and residential buildings, the transport network and the new site of the Moscow government. The construction of four new metro stations in the territory has been completed, two of which have opened and two others are reserved for future metro lines crossing MIBC. Some additional stations were planned. A rail shuttle service, directly connecting MIBC with the Sheremetyevo International Airport is also planned. Major thoroughfares through Moscow City are the Third Ring and Kutuzovsky Prospect. Three metro stations were initially planned for the Filyevsky Line. The station Delavoy TSENTR opened in 2005, and was later renamed Vystavoknaya in 2009. The branch extended to the Mezdunarodnaya station in 2006, and all work on third station, Dorogomolovskaya between Kievskaya and Delavoy TSENTR, has been postponed. There are plans to extend the branch as far as the Savyalovskaya station, on the serpakovsko timiryazevskaya line. A fourth ring freeway in addition to MKAD, Garden Ring and the Third Ring has been designed and is being built around Moscow. It is to be completed by 2012 and will have a total length of 61 kilometers 38 miles. In March 2009 the Russian business newspaper Kommersant reported that because of the worldwide financial crisis of 2007-2008, many of the construction projects in Moscow especially in the Moscow International Business Center are frozen and may be cancelled altogether. Like the ambitious Russia Tower in Moscow City. Topic. Media Moscow is home to nearly all of Russia's nationwide television networks, radio stations, newspapers and magazines. Topic. Newspapers English language media include the Moscow Times and Moscow News, which are, respectively, the largest and oldest English language weekly newspapers in all of Russia. Kommersant, Vedomosti and Novaya Gazeta are Russian-language media headquartered in Moscow. 
Kumersant and Vedomosti are among the country's leading and oldest Russian language business newspapers. Topic: <laughs> TV and radio. Other media in Moscow include the Echo of Moscow, the first Soviet and Russian private news radio and information agency, and NTV, one of the first privately owned Russian television stations. The total number of radio stations in Moscow in the FM band is near 50. Moscow television networks Moscow radio stations Famous people Topic. International relations Topic. Twin towns and sister cities Topic. Cooperation agreements Moscow has cooperation agreements with Lisbon, Portugal Tehran, Iran Amsterdam, the Netherlands Yerevan, Armenia Topic. Former twin towns and sister cities Kiev, Ukraine Topic. Rankings The international rankings of Moscow are The most populous city in Russia, and the most populous city entirely in Europe The most populated inland city in Europe World's northernmost megacity City with the largest trolleybus system in the world Major city with the most forest within its borders City with the busiest subway system in Europe, and the third busiest worldwide City with the highest building in Europe Federation Tower. City with the highest structure in Europe Ostankino Tower. City with the best e-government services according to UN study Muscovites enjoy public digital services more than anywhere else in Europe Topic. See also Topic. References Topic. Notes Topic. External links Media related to Moscow at Wikimedia Commons Official website Travel to Moscow Com, official Moscow Guide Official Moscow Administration Site